The Toyota Supra, one of the most iconic Japanese cars of its era, it quickly rose in popularity when people realized that it could handle a ridiculous amount of power with just a few simple bolt-ons and a tune. Because behind all that 90s era styling was one of the greatest engines to come out of a Toyota factory, the 2JZ. <laughs> So today I'm going to be talking about the 2JZ and all of its different variations. So what makes the 2JZ so great? Here's the thing, when developing this engine, Toyota went over everything that could go wrong in a combustion engine. Cause remember, this is Toyota, you know? Reliability is the name of the game here. They thought about every failure point that could potentially fail and they made it better and stronger so it doesn't fail. For example, they went with a closed deck cast iron block. This made the block stronger and more rigid. So the cylinders can handle a lot higher cylinder pressures. The block is so strong that it can handle well over a thousand horsepower. But they didn't stop there. They also threw on a very strong forged steel crankshaft, super strong main caps to hold it in place, very strong connecting rods, and the turbo variations have low compression dish pistons. Like this is the type of stuff you would use to build a race engine. Now Toyota didn't want to just make a big strong heavy engine. They wanted the 2JZ to last a long time too. So they had to make sure the engine has great cooling and oiling to help it stay cool and lubricated at all times. So the 2JZ ended up with a high capacity oil pump and cooling system, which means it can handle a lot of abuse. Like bouncing off the rev limiter for an extended period of time, kind of abuse. Beat the hell out of that 2JZ throughout the entire drift event and then drive it home. You don't see a lot of Supras doing that nowadays because let's get serious. Regular people like you and I, we have regular people kind of money, which means we can't really afford a Supra anymore. So the closest thing we can get to having a Supra is to do a 2JZ swap. But if you're doing a swap, you need to know that not all 2JZs were created equal. Toyota made four different variations of these engines from 1992 to 2006. There was the 2JZ GE, and then 2JZ GTE, and then 2JZ GE VVTi, and then 2JZ GTE VVTi. Don't worry, I'm gonna get into the details in a bit. But first, let me break these names down for you so you know what's what. The JZ is basically a family of inline six Toyota engines. And the 2JZ is a second generation of it, hence the two. The G, Toyota says it stands for Performance Dual Overhead Cam. But I'm pretty sure it stands for Gangsta dual overhead cam. Cause engineers are just a bunch of bros, come on. The turbocharged versions have a T there for obvious reasons and the E is for electronic fuel injection. In 1997, Toyota started making the VVTi versions of these engines, which stands for Intelligent Variable Valve Time. They developed the VVTi for better low to mid range and faster spools on the turbo engine. Now let's get into the deets. The 2JZ GE. The 2JZ GE was in a bunch of Lexus branded cars here in North America. You can find them in the first gen Lexus SC300, model years 93 to 96, first gen GS300, 93 to 97, and the non-turbo Mark IV Supra. It made around 220 horsepower stock, depending on what car it was in. Now these engines, they have strong rods, strong crank, strong block. They are very reliable, they'll run forever, and you can run 400 to 500 horsepower with stock internals, no problem. But this engine does come with a distributor. It's an old engine. It also doesn't have oil squirt and it has higher compression pistons, not so great for a turbo application. Now the turbocharged version of this engine, the 2JZ GTE was in a bunch of cars in Japan, but here in North America, only one car had it. The twin turbo Toyota Supra, that's it. It made around 280 horsepower in Japan. In North America, it made around 320. And most of our parents Still didn't buy it. Now take that in for a minute. This engine has strong rods, strong crank, strong block, low compression pistons that are ideal for that big old single turbo, excellent oiling, I'm talking excellent, and can easily make 750 horsepower on everything stock, just a big old single turbo and a tune. The internals are very stout. Now in my opinion, there's only one con. They're expensive. In 1997, the VBTI came along. So there was a 2JZ GE VBTI. You can find these in a bunch of cars in Japan, but here in North America, you can find them again in 
first gen Lexus SC300, but 97 to 2000 are the ones that came with the VVTi. Second gen GS300, 97 to 2005. First gen IS300, which was produced from 2001 to 2005. And the non-turbo Mark IV Supra, only in 98. They all made around 220 horsepower stock, depending on which car they were in. Once again, these engines, strong crank, strong block, but unlike the non-VVTi motor, this one does not have a distributor. So you can do coil on plugs and such. Now as for the cons, this one does have lighter and weaker rods, high compression pistons, which again, not so good with turbo application, and it doesn't have oil squirters. Over 400 horsepower with stock pistons and rods, and you're seriously risking blowing up the engine. And now, the king of all Jay-Z's, the 2JZ GTE VVTi. This engine was never offered in any car in North America even the Mark IV Supra. It made around 320 stock horsepower. This engine had everything. This engine has strong rods, strong crank, strong block, low compression pistons for that big old turbo, excellent oiling, can handle well over a thousand horsepower. And as for the cons, this is the most expensive 2JZ. Like very expensive, like almost not worth it kind of expensive. It is a flex though, not gonna lie. And that's about it. Sadly, they had to stop production of the 2JZ engines by 2006 due to emission restrictions. But Toyota made these overbuilt, over-engineered engines from 1992 all the way to 2006. And these kind of like peppered it on these Toyota and Lexus branded cars, spending lots of money on development and quality materials all throughout those years. What Toyota had in mind at the time wasn't to get the most horsepower out of these engines. None of them even reached 350 horsepower from factory. What they were actually aiming for when developing the 2JZ was reliable, low maintenance, fun power for many, many miles. But what made the 2JZ strong and reliable also made it handle over a thousand horsepower. More like a fantastic side effect. So Subaru, if you're watching this, take a few notes. So now you know why you see the 2JZ on all kinds of motorsports. Whether it's drag, drift, grip, or just general hooning and abuse. <laughs> now given its popularity, do you think Toyota should remake this engine? And maybe sell it as a crate? Honestly, I think that would be pretty cool. But let me know down below in the comments what you think. So that's it for today. Let me know if I missed anything. I have lots more exciting content coming your way. And that's all because you watch and subscribe. It's your fault, basically. It really motivates me and it means a lot. So thank you. So consider subscribing if you haven't already. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Amzopyrus. And thanks for watching.